Hey y'all, it's Bridget Moses from Vincent Bridget Moses Godly Encouragement with some more Godly Encouragement for you. Today we're continuing our series on love and we are talking about loving ourselves today. We have to love ourselves. We don't have to be in love with ourselves. That's not what we want, but we do need to love ourselves. God created each one of us in his own image. God doesn't create junk and he certainly doesn't make mistakes. Therefore, if we don't love ourselves, it's actually a form of blasphemy, even though we don't realize it. I used to be extremely hateful towards myself. I lived in cycles of shame, guilt, condemnation, self-hatred, self-loathing, self-pity, bitterness, and rage. I used to believe the lie that I was a mistake that I had no other purpose than to be used, that I was a waste of space and of air. As I got to know God through his word, however, I realized that since God gave me his love and forgiveness through his son, Jesus, that I didn't really have a right to reject it. It definitely took a lot of convincing me, or convincing to get me there though. I remember one day thinking about how terrible of a person I was because of everything that I did before knowing Jesus. I heard so clearly in my spirit, not in an audible voice, but it was such a clear thought that it might as well have been. I heard in my spirit, so are you saying that you're more powerful than my son? Instantly, I shockingly replied, no. And I heard God say to me, yes, you do. You're saying that you're too bad and too dirty for my son's blood to cleanse. So therefore you're saying that you are more powerful than my son. I was floored. God was right. I kept rejecting the free gift of God's grace because I felt unworthy of receiving it. Jesus died such a horrific death on the cross for me and I was essentially throwing it back in his face. That was a painful revelation at the time. It really was, but it was also one of the most freeing revelations that I've ever had. God helped me to realize that I didn't have to be clean to receive his love, that it was because of his love that I was clean. Let me say that again. God helped me to realize that I didn't have to be clean to receive his love, that it was only because of his love that I was clean. Let that sink in for a minute. He is the only reason we're clean. Him and him alone. The blood of Jesus is what cleanses us, nothing else. If God saw fit to send his son to die for me while I was yet in my sin, when I was a filthy mess, filthy, hot, stanky mess in my sin, then what right did I have to reject that love? This was my first step on my journey of learning how to receive God's love and in turn, love myself. God helped me to understand that I wasn't a mistake. I was not a mistake and neither are you. That he loves me with an everlasting love and he loves you with an everlasting love. That nothing could ever separate me from that love, nor will it separate you from that love. That I had to receive that love by faith so that I could love others. We have a tendency to talk to ourselves in a way that we never talk to others or allow other people to talk to to anyone. When we're nasty to and hard on ourselves, we're in essence telling God that he didn't know what he was doing when he created us. <laughs> we're unrighteously judging his creation, us. That's no way to thank God for the literal hell that he went through in order to save us and to give us life exceedingly and abundantly above all we can think, hope, or imagine. As I've said before, we can't give something away that we don't possess. 
unless we receive God's love first, then learn how to love others, we won't know how to love anyone else. God's agape love is unconditional. His grace knows no bounds, and his mercies are new every morning. He never beats us over the head with a stick, so we should never either. I have an unspoken rule. If I wouldn't say it to anyone else, or God wouldn't say it to me, then I won't allow myself to talk to me like that either. When we learn how to love ourselves, we can allow that love to flow out onto others. We're the perfect training ground for God's love in action. It was not an easy road to learn to love myself. I had been so ingrained in self-loathing and um, self-hatred um, and self-period that it was hard for me to receive his love. I really felt unworthy. I had to deal with a lot of shame and condemnation um, and residue from sin. But the more that I poured myself into the Bible, asked God to help me to understand it, the more that I read it, I would listen to it on headphones. I'd listen to the audio Bible over and over and over and over again. I would actually listen while I was asleep it because I used to have such terrible nightmares. I used to have like real disturbing dreams every single night for as long as I could remember. I had them every night. As a matter of fact, I was on a couple medications at one point for those nightmares. Um, and no, I'm no longer on any medications now just to want to throw that in there. Give glory to God for that. Um, and haven't been on any psych meds for um, like five or six years. I think it's like five years ago that I was finally off the last psych med. Um, but the more that I poured myself into reading God's word and filling, because whatever we fill ourselves with is that is what we're going to be. That's what's going to come out of us. So if we fill ourselves with God's word, then that's what's going to come out of us when we get into trouble. That's what's going to come out of us when we need his help. And we need to get it in our mind. We need to know it so that if we're not around a Bible or not around our phone to have access to one, we can fight with that word. It's a double-edged sword. One side to cut through the enemy, one side to cut through us. But we have to use that sword. We have to know that it's a weapon to begin with. And God's word cuts through all the lies that we've believed. We begin to see ourselves in everybody in the Bible. And let me tell you, there's some pretty messed up people in the Bible. <laughs> there's some jacked up people in the Bible. And that's awesome. Because when I saw that, I'm like, hey, I belong here. <laughs> like, it's not a bunch of perfect people. I can relate to this, you know, somebody living in adultery or, you know, uh, stealing or, you know, um, run into other things like drugs, sex, money, whatever number of things, status. None of those things fill us. But everybody in the Bible was, the Bible says there's nothing new that happens under the sun. You know, what we've been through, um, you know, there's always somebody else that has been through something similar. You just got to know that it's not our goodness that gets us to be able to come before God, a holy God. It's his goodness. It's the blood of Jesus period. Let's get to our scriptures for today. Let's start with Mark 12, 31 in the ESV. Oh, I, I do want to finish my thought though, because I drifted off. The more that I poured myself into scripture and into listening to sermons, I'd watch like hours and hours and hours per day. 
Um, I literally devoured the Word of God and turn, tuned out all the other things. I stopped listening to secular rap. I stopped watching movies for a while. And just for a season, I began to devour God's Word. And it began to change me. And then it began to change my appetites. And I realized that all that stuff was junk food. And I was missing some filet mignon found in the Word. And I became really really hungry for God's word and it has completely completely revolutionized my life because of it and so let's go to what completely revolutionizes our lives and that's God's word Mark twelve thirty one in the ESV the second is this you shall love your neighbor as yourself there is no other commandment greater than these you can't love your, na- love your neighbor if you first don't receive God's love and love yourself. 2 Timothy 1.7 in the ESV says, For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. Or some say a sound mind, and that uh, other versions say a sound mind, and that really 2 Timothy 1.7 has been one of my go-to verses um, throughout my entire walk with Jesus. Um, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. Um, That's just this. I'm just focusing on this verse. Galatians 5, 22 in the ESV and 23 lists the rest of the fruit of the Spirit. Colossians 3, 12 in the ESV. Put on then as God's chosen ones. That's an action. Put on. Holy and uh, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. They're not going to be things we want to we want to do. We have to actually be intentional about doing those things. Ephesians five two in the ESV says, "And walk in love as Christ loved us and gave Himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God." First John four nineteen says, "We love because He first loved us." 1 John 4, 16 through 21 in the ESV says, So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. By this is love perfected with us, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment, because as he is, so also we are in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, if I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. 1 John 4, 9 in the ESV says, In this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that, he, so that we might live through him. Ephesians three fourteen through 21 in the ESV says, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend what, with all the saints what is the breadth, length, depth, height, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Once again, that was Ephesians 3, 14 through 21 in the ESV, and all of our scriptures will be in the description box below. 2 John 1, 6 in the ESV says, And this is love, that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, just as you have heard from the beginning, so that you should walk in it. 1 Corinthians 3, or, um, 13, 3 in the ESV says, If I give away all that I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but I have not love, I gain nothing. 1 John three eighteen in the ESV says, Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. Love is an action. Love is shown in action. 
God showed his love for us by sending his son to die for us. That was his action. Now, it has been, it's finished. He's done everything he's going to do. We receive the finished work of Christ. We receive his righteousness, his love, his salvation, his healing, his deliverance, his freedom. We receive it all in him. If you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I urge you to do so. All you need to do is confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. That's it. You're saved by faith in that. Jesus says that whoever comes to him, he'll never turn away anybody. I paraphrase that, but he will not turn anyone away. If you feel like you, if you've never confessed with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believed in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, then do it today. You're not guaranteed five minutes from now. You're, you're only guaranteed right now. We never know what can happen. And if you feel that tug, there's a reason. Don't ever think that you have to be perfect to come to God because none of us are. Even after receiving Jesus, our spirit is recreated instantly and is a perfect copy of Jesus' spirit, Christ's spirit. But it's, we still have our soul to deal with. We are, our soul is being perfected until Jesus returns. The only perfect man ever to walk this earth was Jesus. So you're off the hook. You don't have to be perfect. You're only competition is yourself that's it to be better than who you were yesterday and you will fall time and time and time and time again as long as you keep getting back up you'll get to where you're going just keep getting back up no matter how many times you fall when you fall repent to God repent means a change of action to change directions you repent you receive his forgiveness don't do like I did and was like, I'm not worthy of your forgiveness and rejected it, like I said earlier. We have to receive the gift. we got to open it. And then we ask him to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. We receive him cleansing us of all unrighteousness. And that's process. Things don't happen overnight in the kingdom of God. We live in a microwave, you know, internet right at your fingers, 5G society. God is, God is more like a typewriter versus the internet. God is more like a crock pot than a microwave. Sometimes like a pressure cooker. <laughs> but he's always with us. And we always get to know him more and more throughout that process never allow yourself to be so discouraged give him give God as much time as you gave the world and I promise you you won't be disappointed give God as much time as you gave the world and I promise you you won't be disappointed that's from Mama Joyce Myers Meyer why do I say Myers sometimes I don't mean to that's from Mama Joyce Meyer And you can tell a tree by their fruit. Listen to those that have gone before you. It makes our flesh cringe. It does. It's offensive sometimes. We don't want to hear it. We just want to stay stuck in where we're familiar with. But I promise you, ain't nothing there for you. Nothing. You're not going to miss out if you go forward. Yes, you don't know what's going to happen. God does. Trust the one that does. And we'll see you next time when we continue our series on love. See y'all tomorrow. Bye.